60 Minutes Overtime. Do you see a world where machines are fighting our battles for us? Oh, absolutely. It's already happening. Our story this week is about Palmer Luckey. He is the billionaire founder of Andril, which makes autonomous weapons that are powered by artificial intelligence. To be clear, autonomous does not mean remote controlled. Once an autonomous weapon is programmed and given a task, it can use artificial intelligence for surveillance or to identify, select, and engage targets. No operator needed. It's a scary idea to some people. It's a scary idea, but I mean, that's the world we live in. I'd say it's a lot scarier, for example, to imagine a weapon system that doesn't have any level of intelligence at all. There's no moral high ground in making a landmine that can't tell the difference between a school bus full of children and Russian armor. It's not a question between smart weapons and no weapons. It's a question between smart weapons and dumb weapons. Lucky showed us Lattice, the AI platform that coordinates these so-called smart weapons and collects data from various sensors and sources, satellites, drones, radar, and cameras. There are lots of people who go, oh, AI, I don't know, I don't trust it, it's gonna go rogue. I would say that it is something to be aware of, but in the grand scheme of things, things to be afraid of, there's things that I'm much more terrified of. And I'm a lot more worried about evil people with mediocre advances in technology than AI deciding that it's gonna wipe us all out. Critics have called autonomous lethal weapons killer robots, but Palmer Luckey is really quick to say, listen, these all have a kill switch that if a human needs to intervene, they can. Right now, there's so many weapon systems that require manning. You know, if I can have one guy commanding and controlling 100 aircraft, that's a lot easier than having to have a pilot in every single one, and it puts a lot fewer American lives at risk. So we're here today looking at the YFQ-44A. This is the first autonomous fighter jet. That the US Brian Schimpf is the CEO and co-founder of Andrel, and he showed us Fury, their unmanned aircraft. We were the first media outlet allowed to see Fury, and this has been a super secret project for them. We weren't allowed to say where we saw it or where it's been built, but we were allowed to look at it for the first time. There's no cockpit, there's no human. This system operates totally autonomously. And these are very large, serious aircraft designed to do air-to-air -air combat. Fury is a CCA, which means Collaborative Combat Aircraft. It is powered by artificial intelligence to operate alongside fighter jets that have pilots. This system is designed to use software to autonomously control it and work with a man quarterback sitting in a fighter jet alongside it, sitting in an F-35 or something like that. These are first and foremost about protecting pilots' lives. These fly out ahead of manned fighters and they're able to find the enemy first, be able to engage the enemy well before a manned fighter has to be seen or is in range. Uh, so these are really about providing that deterrence by putting systems well out in front of man fighters. Andrew was selected by the Pentagon to create a CCA. They beat out a number of prime defense contractors to get a chance to do that. So Fury is their CCA. And if it is chosen by the Air Force, they will be mass produced inside the United States. Potentially, it would be a lot less expensive than a fighter jet. The goal of these systems is to be mass producible, and we tried to eliminate really every bottleneck we could find around what makes an aircraft hard to produce. Uh, so really simple things that we've been able to do are design the landing gear, for example, instead of using very exquisite big aircraft landing gear, which are hard to produce, really limited supply, we designed it so it can be built in any machine shop in America. Instead of using a military engine, we've been able to use a commercial business jet engine that are mass produced and readily available. And we've designed nearly every part of this that can be made in hundreds of different places within the U.S. from lots of different suppliers. Fury is scheduled to take its first test flight this summer. The Air Force hopes to have CCAs fully operational before the end of this decade. And right now, we're proving out the aircraft and getting through all the engineering. But we're also working through how will these things be used in combat. We're working through simulations and ways these can actually be employed. So this is a big deal beyond just making an airplane that flies. It's an entirely new way of fighting. 